Good evening. Welcome to Marlene at Home. Tonight I'd like to talk about the use of lighting, the oohs and ahs of using lighting in your home. It's so pivotal and yet often we overlook it. We are just automatically drawn to rooms that have appealing lighting. They're very inviting. Rooms that are kind of dim or difficult to see or not well lit, they just kind of leave us kind of, kind of blah. But there's just something magical about the way we can use lighting that even little children, like my grandchildren, they'll be like, ooh, oh, ooh, I like this. And so I'd like to talk about some of those tips tonight. Some of the things I use here right in my foyer is some lighting in a corner cupboard to accent some dishes. And one of my favorite things to do because it has uh, light switches difficult to reach is I use a little thing on the floor that I can just step on and turn the light off and on. It was designed for Christmas trees, but it's just an easy way to access lighting. Otherwise, I'd have to reach up high for a short person to get that light on or to add on other lights. This is just a little um, leftover summer light that I haven't changed out yet. I'm almost done with fall decorating, but not quite. And just a little accent light. Sometimes in the evening, this is the only light I leave on here in the foyer, and the light is shown through the glass door in the front of the house. Another um, lighting thing that I've really liked in our house, and it's this lighting on our steps. Steps are an important part of our lives, and we just want to be sure that they're safe and well lit, and so I have really appreciated the lighting that we have here on our steps. Now this lighting came built in with a house, so we are very fortunate. But at our last house, going down to our family room in the basement, there was no lighting, and it was very dark. I just purchased some rope lighting, and I tacked it onto the woodwork in a few places, and it just added a lot. It was a, a nice safety feature. And so if you don't have built-in lighting, I didn't for many years either, and I just bought uh, rope lighting, and that was an easy fix for a dark spot. So that's just a little bit about lighting in my foyer and in my steps. Before we leave our, my foyer, I wanted to show you with some additional lighting added. This is with my overhead light as you enter into our foyer. It gives a whole different feel to the room by turning on the overhead accent light. In my dining room, there's lots of ways to use lighting. I have the chandelier over the table on the dimmer switch. So that's a way to transform a room, give it a different mood, different setting. It can be, and I'll show you in a minute when it's full brightness. Um, of course, don't forget the use of candlelight in the middle of a table. We even like doing it with our grandchildren, no matter what table we're using. Sometimes at night, we'll light a candle and we'll say, let's pretend we're at a restaurant. Let's use our restaurant voices and our best manners. And the kids think that's a lot of fun. My kindergarten grandson, he always says to me, can't we eat in the dining room, Mama? And I'm like, Josiah, we're just having peanut butter and jelly. I know, but it's more special in the dining room. So sometimes we eat peanut butter and jelly at the dining room table. I love having welcome lights in all of my exterior windows. So that's always a nice thing for the evening. I don't have any, if I don't have any other lights in the room, I have the welcome lights in each window. Uh, my sister and a friend of hers visited from uh, down south a few years ago, and she had never seen, her friend had never seen welcome lights in the window, and she said, before I go home, I have to get those northern lights to take home. I'm like, what northern lights? And it was the little welcome candles in the windows. And so, um, Karen, I hope you still have your welcome lights. Anyway, I just use a string of lights that you can get at Walmart or the dollar store, put them in my china closet, and it brightens up otherwise what would be a very dark corner in my room. Uh, I have these fake candles, battery-operated candles, all throughout my house. That's a nice feature. And I'll show you some other things as we turn the camera around. 
in putting out my fall decorations. At first I was just going to put out fall, September, October kind of things. I decided instead, because of doing this series, to also start putting up the Thanksgiving things as well. I don't have it all done, but here's some pilgrims. And I, I wanted to mention this, not that it has to do specifically with lighting, but with my grandchildren being in the area, these are wooden. So I'm putting out more sturdy decorations at childhood level, and then keeping the antique glass things in my corner cupboards that are not as touchable. In this corner, I have my tea cart that was my mother-in-law's, and I have a um, tea pitcher that, a teapot that her good friend gave her from England that has a famous castle on it. And I've just taken some of these little micro lights that you just get for a few dollars, and um, they're battery operated. And this one, I think, has um, 20 little lights maybe, and it takes three AA batteries, and those three uh, batteries will last almost all season for me. And so this just adds some light to this corner. Now I also want to show you the room when I bring it up to the full light. Now this is very bright so I don't know that you want to use everything but if it's a child's birthday party or you know you have a buffet and a lot of people you want to be sure they see everything then full lighting is great. And in daylight, I'll talk about the use of shutters in, in the room, too. That's a nice feature that can give more light or take some away. Okay. Here in my kitchen, I've used some white mini lights, just made a little um, centerpiece kind of thing here on my counter. Just added some things I've had for years, some newer things. This is like the only new fall decoration. Um, has some special meaning for my family. It just says, hey there, pumpkin. And one of the people in my family's nickname is pumpkin. So anyway, this just uh, leaves some light here on the table, on the counter. In the evening, I'll leave everything else dark in this room, but leave this on. And that gives this room a really pretty setting for the fall. Um, in this room, there's a number of different kinds of lighting that we use, and I'll be turning them up as time um, goes on and adding more. Some are the ceiling lights, the down lights that are up there, and so you'll see those when I turn those up in a minute. Others are counter accent lights and um, then little extra lights around the room. So let me just show you some of those right now. I've now added one of my ceiling down lights that's right over my kitchen sink. You could also call this a task light. It's a light for a specific reason, and it comes straight down. Well, all lighting comes down, I mean goes straight, but this comes straight down, focuses right here on my sink, and so I really like that. I have a number of um, ceiling down lights throughout my house, and they're especially nice in the kitchen. The rest of the room is on a dimmer switch. So I'm going to come over here and show you some changes in the room when I bring up the dimmer switch. So now that will bring up the room all the way to full light, almost. There is another layer of lighting that our kitchen has, and that is a fluorescent ceiling light. Whoops. There it goes. Wrong wrong switch. Anyway, that adds a whole different glow to this room. So there are layers of light that you can put on top of one another. You can even include, there's an old coffee grinder lamp that was in my family and it's been made into a light and so if you wanted some special bright, bright light on this side of the room, you have that as well. Here at my kitchen table, there's a few more of those micro lights that I've woven around some things, ornaments and centerpieces I have on the middle of the table. But I wanna also talk about some library books and recommend some. This one, um, Living with Light, is about adding natural light. And so if you're thinking of building or purchasing a home, uh, I know one of the things that drew me to our house, looking at it in the daylight, was all the bright light, all the wonderful windows, and I'll talk about that another time in the daylight. 
Uh, another book, this one was just called Kitchens, but there's a whole section on um, kitchen lighting, and so I recommend that. Also, and these were all at the North Carroll branch today, uh, The Twilight Garden, Creating a Garden That Enter... Uh, yeah, Creating a Garden That Entrances by Day and Becomes Alive at Night. And so, Lighting Outdoors. But my very favorite book that I found, Home Lighting Effects Bible. And this really talks about a lot of the things, and I've only just perused it the last couple of days. It talks a lot about the different kinds of lighting that I have talked about, all different ideas. It'll show you a kitchen with six different kinds of lighting and the effects that it makes, and it, it's very, very dramatic. And so I'd highly recommend that to you. I remember a few years ago, uh, my cousin's husband was selling their house, and um, one of the things that had been on the market for a while, and one of the things that he did was to add lighting under his kitchen cabinets. Now, I don't have lighting under mine, and I would love to do this, but he added lighting under his kitchen cabinets, and it transformed that kitchen, and it seemed like as soon as he did it, the house sold in a week. So lighting really can make a big difference if you're selling your house as well as doing it for yourself um, while you're living there. Here in my living room, I want to show you a few tricks that we have. Sometimes I just like everything dim, everything else out. But for the camera's sake, we have a few extra lights on. I would have loved to have had the fireplace, but of course tonight, even though it's fall, it was, it's a warm evening, too warm for the fireplace. But the fire always adds light and just sets the mood coziness, warmth to a room, even the fake gas fireplaces, they just add so much, even if you're not getting heat per se. And so I mentioned that even though ours is not lit. One of the things we have here is that we can turn um, our lights above our display case here. Um, and it was on dim to start with and now I've turned it up. Another uh, trick is I have several, maybe seven or eight candles throughout the house that are controlled by um, a little uh, remote control. If you watch those two middle candles, I have the ability to turn them on. And I can go around the room. I have them on end tables. Well, maybe I'm not close enough at the moment. But anyway, um, this is also a battery-operated candle. Another feature you might want to consider, you can purchase these Wi-Fi outlets. Just stick in to your, any outlet. You can plug in lights, which is what we do when we go away. Plug in lights on here, and then you get onto your uh, phone app. Uh, there's an app you get. You get on your phone, and you can turn your lights off and on, or your crock pot off, or off and on. Anything that you can plug in, then you can control it. It's kind of like we also have something like this for our thermostat. So when we're away, we can turn our heat down, or we're getting ready to come home from vacation in the summer turn off our air conditioning, or we'll go away during the winter, we can put our heat really low, but on the way home, turn it up and heat our house. So just some of the nice features, but this is great for lighting. And we have several sockets throughout the house, so maybe this night we'll turn on this light, that another room, another night. And so um, just a, a nice safety feature of ways that you can use lighting. Another lighting feature is you can purchase an up light. I have this one right here in the middle of the tree. This is shooting a light up through the tree, up to the ceiling. Uh, sometimes I have it in the tree, sometimes I have it down like in the ground, fake ground part of the tree, and it lights more of the bark going up to the leaves. And so that's another um, possible feature for my youngest daughter's wedding. We transformed a gym by using gobs of yards and yards of lace and uh, different fabrics and um, up lighting. So you have the down lighting from your ceiling. This is the up lighting coming from the floor direction. Another feature you can use is called double lighting. Putting two lights side by side features the table as well as the light above the table. Okay, now I've turned on all the lights, almost all of the lights here in this room. And you can just see the different feel that that has. There are a number of the ceiling down lights, probably three, six, not maybe 12 here in this room. So we have a lot of those. We have um, 
a spotlight that focuses on this wall that I didn't turn on. So there's even more ways to add light. Could add light from the upstairs where it's a foyer balcony kind of thing. That light floods down to this room as well as turning on the foyer lights out behind me and that adds even more. So lots of layers of light, different kinds of light, light coming from above, light coming from the floor, light coming from um, the mantle, a desk light, those kinds of things. So I hope um, there's some additional lighting here on a desk in our foyer. It just adds a little touch. Of course, a mirror always reflects more light. So that just always gives a nice welcoming feel when you first come in. And so I hope you've enjoyed this session on the oohs and ahs of lighting. I hope you'll think about different ways you could use lighting in your home and that some of these tips would be helpful. Thanks again for joining Marlene at Home.